Hi there, Eric Backer, naturopath. Thank you for watching this video today. Today I'd like to talk a bit about hypothyroidism and what that really constitutes and what it means and, and how it could affect the quality of your life. So you may like to read the article on this page which will explain a lot more about this particular topic but what we find in New Zealand and no doubt in Australia and America and many other Western countries that up to half of the population potentially suffer from low thyroid activity or hyperthyroidism. It's a very common condition I see in many women in particular who come and visit me in my clinic. Interesting is uh, when I first get patients in the room and I look at their hands and feet, for example, ears and nose and how cold they are. Many people uh, will, will often talk about cold body temperature, cold hands. Some people may notice a bit of hair loss. Uh, other times we have a good look at the eyes and we'll see that the outer edge of the eyebrow is becoming a bit thin or a bit of hair loss is occurring. There are many signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism and I won't have time to cover them all in this video but the most common ones are uh, fatigue, cold body temperature, uh, we're going to find uh, constipation in some patients, elevated cholesterol, visual problems, you know, being more sensitive to the light or having blurry eyes or gritty eyes or dry eyes, these are also manifestations, uh, anxiety and depression, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. And many doctors would argue that this whole diagnosis is a load of baloney because blood testing has shown that this patient to be euthyroid or okay, that there's nothing wrong with the thyroid. And I've even had patients in my room with, with an actual invisible goiter or an enlarged neck with freezing cold hands and showing signs of major hair loss. And the doctor has said to this patient, it looks like a thyroid problem to me, but the blood tests are fine, so there's nothing wrong with your thyroid. We know now that blood testing is a very insensitive marker on the functional capacity of the thyroid. Okay, And the other thing I'm not really happy about with thyroid hormone testing is, as I say to patients, it's going to change from day to day, like the weather. So today I'm looking outside, it's overcast. Tomorrow the sun could be shining. So if I take your blood test today and find that your thyroid stimulating hormone is too high or too low, could I automatically infer from that one single blood test that for the next six months that you're going to have that particular thyroid activity? No, I can't infer that at all. Okay, Any more than I can infer that if I take your blood pressure once or twice that you've got high blood pressure. You know, there are many factors that account for hypertension just like there are many factors that would account for why your thyroid stimulating could be elevated or decreased. But to take a one shot or take one photo outside and see that the weather is overcast and automatically assume that it's always overcast in, you know, in the region where you live, the sun will never shine. This, this to me is just fallacy. It's ridiculous. Doctors are great at what they do, but they're not good at when it comes to improving the functional capacity of an organ. And there are many factors, uh, again, which uh, account for this. The thyroid has got quite strict nutritional requirements. And one thing that I've been doing in my clinic the last several months is iodine testing. And we've tested nearly 60 patients so far and have found only one patient in that whole amount I've tested to be anywhere near borderline. Most of them have been extremely low. And in many cases, I've put this patient on iodine therapy and found literally within weeks that her hands would warm up, her weight would come off, her mood would improve, her sleep would improve. We've seen major turnarounds in patients' health and well-being by assessing iodine and treating any deficiency. It's not a cure-all, but it's allowing the body to have what it requires to build the thyroid hormones. Iodine deficiency is very real in New Zealand and in Australia and many other countries. Dr. David Brownstein in America uh, believes that up to 90% of the population are iodine deficient, which is incredible. So I'd like to conclude with this video by saying, if you have a problem with thyroid, you can call my clinic, you can call Tracy, and if you want, we can certainly assess your iodine levels and make sure that they are you know, in the normal zone. Before you do anything further, get your iodine assessed first. And then we'll, the next step is we'll start looking at things like vitamin D, selenium, zinc, manganese and all the other cofactors and we usually treat those at the same time and uh, let's just see how your thyroid condition goes then so 
I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you.